We're going to do something slightly different this video. I wanted to show you that you can use the tools that we've learned so far to build an actual game. We're actually looking at the source code for a game I'm making right now called Double Action. It's a free game. Uh, you can see a video of it right here in the corner. It's about doing things with style and it's, uh, if you want to play it you can go to doubleactiongame.com and we're looking at the source code for this game. The source code by the way is also free. It's on GitHub and I put a link to it in the description so you can go and check it out and see how it works. Uh, and we're looking at the function that gets called when the player starts diving that has to determine what the velocity of the player should be when the player dives. And it's really not that complicated. It only uses things that we've done so far, sim simple vector arithmetic, and I'm going to walk you through it real quick. First we see MP outer. What does that mean? That is the player that dived. And we're going to get his velocity. And we're going to store it in this vector right here, vec velocity. So what we want to calculate is the direction that the player dives, because we need that information for some animation and stuff later on. So we're going to zero out the Z uh, component of the vector. And the Z component, this is a 3D game, and in this game, uh, Z represents up and down. In other games, Y is up and down. Uh, I guess maybe you might see X is up and down, but usually it's either Y or Z. And in this game, Z means up and down. And we're zeroing that out because we only want the lateral dive direction, forward, back, left, and right. So then we normalize the vector, which means we make it a unit length vector. And so then we have our dive direction. This is a unit length vector, a normalized vector that represents what direction the player dived in. And we stash that away. We save it for later because we need it for animation and, and for uh, other movement calculations. So next we want to see the exact velocity that the player is going to be diving at. We only we only calculated the dive direction. Now we want to find the actual speed that the player is going to be diving at. What direction is the beginning of his dive going to be? So we start with the di dive direction that we just calculated. And the first thing we do is we multiply in the dive speed. This is, uh, this is from the video where I discussed you can make a character go faster or slower by multiplying a vector. And we, we're multiplying it by the dive speed. So remember Right now we're still working with a unit length vector, so when we multiply by the dive speed, we get a vector of length of the dive speed. And this modify skill value function, all that does is it makes it a little bit faster if the player has the athletic skill. In this game you can choose uh, from a number of skills, and if the player chooses the athletic skills, then they're able to dive higher and farther. And that's all this function does, is it makes the dive speed a little bit higher if the player has that skill active. So now we have a vector that is uh, that is at our dive speed and in the direction of our dive and we also multiply it by the speed fraction. All this does is that if the player is walking and they dive you want to do kind of a little dive because it would look weird if the player is walking and then they go and dive in, in some direction really fast. So if the player is walking or, or moving slowly then it reduces the speed of the dive by multiplying it. And then the very last thing it does is it adds back in the dive height. This is the constructor I mentioned before. And this is the x value, oops, the x value, the y value, and the z value. And the z value in this game is up and down. And so all we're do doing is adding in a new vector that has the height of the dive, how high we want the player to go. Uh, and we're adding in that value and so when we've done all this, we have a dive speed and we return that. And that is, uh, in another part of the game, set as the velocity of the player at the beginning of his dive. And so now let's go into the game and see how it works. Alright, now here we are in the game. And sure enough, when I press stunt, I get a little bit of up velocity. And I get all that lateral velocity, and I, I retain the velocity that I had before I went into the dive, just like that. So it looks like it works, and uh, that's really it. That's all you need. You can design a lot of cool games with just the stuff you've learned so far, and I highly encourage you 
to go and try it out. There are a lot of game engines that you can use. There's Unity, there's Unreal. Download one of them. Give it a shot. And I look forward to seeing a lot of the cool stuff that you guys do. For our next video, we're going to be looking at backstabs. In other words, how to tell if a character is behind another character when he attacks him. So, I'll see you next time.